What's up guys, Jeff Tavalier, AthleteX.com. Today we're talking all about the neck and how to build a bigger one safely. You see, there's a lot of options out there when it comes to training your neck, but only a few of them are actually gonna help you to train them safely. See if you can spot in these exercises some of the things that you might have been doing in the past because people have told you to do these. Maybe they've been telling you to do this neck bridging on your back like this, or maybe even lean forward and do them like this. The idea is this series will do two things for you. Number one, it will help you to build a huge ass thick neck. Number two, it's gonna help you to build a huge ass pile of shit for vertebrae that's left over when you're done doing those. You see, it's not all about the muscles, guys, especially if you're watching this channel. It's about doing what you do so that you can have some longevity in the process. And I'm gonna break out Raymond here to show you exactly why. Because when you look at those exercises that I showed you, we're not just talking about being able to build strength in the neck. We're talking about the position you're putting yourself in in the process of trying to do that. And, uh, and you are doing some major damage to the structural integrity of your spine. And remember this, you only get one of these in your lifetime. Only one, so you better protect it. And what we're looking at is we get a lot of compression through all of those because this is a closed chain exercise. And normally closed chain exercises are fantastic. They're exactly what you wanna do, exactly how you wanna train, especially if you wanna train like an athlete. But when it comes to the neck, you do not wanna train that way because you're introducing all this compression here through the spine. Now look at what's going on here. All these little yellow things here exiting the sides of the vertebrae are your nerve roots. And they exit between the level of the two vertebrae that they're named after. So if you're talking about a C5-6, it's between the levels of C5 and C6. If you're looking at a C6-7, it's between the levels of C6 and C7. Now each one of these nerve roots is going to control the actions down a specific distribution of your arm. So you can have a C6-7, which is gonna control more of the tricep strength down that arm, motor-wise. You're gonna also have sensory, uh, sensory commands as well, but you're gonna have a C5-6 that will come down the deltoid into the bicep. The fact is, until you get compression on one of these nerves, until this little nerve right here is compressed by a vertebrae or something in the area, you won't feel anything. Okay, you might feel a little bit of crunching in the neck, but you're not gonna feel pain or weakness down the arm. It is the moment that you get this impingement and connection with one of these nerve roots, just like that, you can go from zero to 60 in terms of discomfort and weakness. Now, when you do those other exercises, you're compressing the spine down, pushing these bones into each other, that then I have to go and either rotate as I'm doing side to side, or I do the gapping side to side that way, or I'm pushing down and moving my neck forward and back. The idea is that these two bones are now pressing together and they're grinding. And when we get bone on bone, the response to your body or by your body to that is to try to fortify the area a little bit. And what it does, unfortunately, is it usually lays down more bone, called bone spurs or osteophytes. Those bone spurs, all they're doing is making it a higher likelihood that it's going to impinge or touch upon this nerve. Okay, you're leaving more, less room for the nerve to occupy itself, meaning it's gonna have a higher chance that it's gonna touch something. And again, you might be building a really great neck by doing these exercises, the, bone, but the moment that that new bone formation or that compression that's going on in here through the spine by doing them allows it to touch the nerve, you're gonna be in a lot of pain, my friend. And it may be the situation where you're doing this for a long period of time and never feel anything until the day you wake up and realize, holy shit, Jeff was right. I should have been doing something else. And what that something else should be is something that people talk about all the time, or you've probably seen as well, and it's, it's a plate series. And what you do is you wrap a plate in a towel, put it on your head, and you go through the four major directions of movement here, which would be flexion, extension, and side bending. Now, as you see me do here flexion, what I do is I lay so my head is rested at the back of the bench and laying backwards over the end of the bench, so that when I go through the motion here, I have to flex my neck, bring it forward, in order to work the muscles on the front side. Then I flip over, I put the plate on the back of my head, and I do the same thing. Now what I'm gonna do is embed my head backwards, I'm gonna work the, neck, the muscles on the back side of the neck. When I turn on the side here, and drop my head down and then have to come up against the resistance of the plate, I'm actually now working one side of the neck. And of course, when I go to the other side, I'm working the other side of the neck. But that's not even enough if you wanna do this properly. What you need to do to do this really the right way is add one more significant tweak. And that is, if you wanna work the neck, you have to realize that posturally, we're usually all pretty messed up. We allow ourselves to have rounded shoulders throughout the day that our head follows our shoulders. And the only way that our head will compensate so that we can actually still see straight ahead of us is to move up that way. So when it moves up that way, what we're doing is we're stretching out the muscles on the front side of our neck here, and in the same process, weakening them. So if we wanna get this nice and strong here, 
we can't just train those four major directions. We have to do it in a way that we allow these deep flexors of the, uh, of the, of the neck to become activated and strong while we're training our neck. So you need to be able to tuck your chin back and in, this way. Okay, not out here, pull it straight back. If you have to, you take your uh, f index finger, you put it right on the point, of, uh, the point of your chin, you push straight back in like that. Once you're strong in here, now I go through my motions. If I'm gonna go side bend, I side bend. If I'm gonna go flexion, I go flexion here. If I'm gonna go extension, I go extension here. So if you take a look at the plate series again, you can see that now with this modification, pull the chin in, set it, and now do my reps. I don't care if I have to decrease the number of reps I can do to do them effectively with this combination of deep flexion, or if I have to just lighten the weight. But for anybody that tells you, oh, you can't build a really big neck that way, you need to be getting on the ground doing that bridging series, it's complete bullshit. Because you can take any weight plate and continue to progress it. I don't care if you want to throw 100 pounds on there, if you can handle it. The idea of progressive overload is, is firmly in place here, and that is going to help you to build bigger muscles regardless, whether it's in the neck, your biceps, your triceps, your legs. So the idea is allow yourself the chance to strengthen your neck safely, because you really only get one. And if you abuse it, you're going to be in big trouble down the line. And as I said before, those complications that can happen from having all that compression, it's not a matter of, oh, I'm good, I've been doing it for a long period of time. You don't know what's going on in here unless you've had an MRI to show or prove what damage you've done because the day you wake up, you literally will experience what I talk about here, that zero to 60. No pain to all of a sudden I can't really move my arm. There's so much weakness. I have a lot of pain here. What do I do? I can't even move my neck. You might have thought you even slept on it wrong. Maybe not. Maybe a lot more things going on inside your neck than you ever bargained for. So let's do this the right way, guys. This channel is all about training and training for the right effect, but at the same time doing it safely. If you're looking for a workout program that does the exact thing, Never compromising the gains you can make, but just trying to guide you down the way to do it the most uh, safe way for the most longevity, then head to athletex.com and get our Athletex training program. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. And uh, this came as a direct suggestion that you guys have made many times on this channel. That's why I'm making this video for you. So continue to make those suggestions. I'll continue to do the videos you want to see. All right, guys, we'll be back here again soon. See you.